Voting to choose a new president in Zimbabwe began on Wednesday, July 31st at 7 a.m. local time to close at 7 p.m. Statistics reveal nearly 6.4 million people have registered on the polls with eligibility to cast their ballots at the country's 9,670 available polling stations. Incumbent President Robert Mugabe, standing as frontman for the nation's ruling ZANU-PF party, is contesting for a seventh term to extend his 33-year rule. Earlier this week, in an interview, he stated he would step down if he lost. His main opponent, opposition leader Morgan Changarai of the Movement for Democratic Change, is vying for the office for the third time. The MDC has decried the electoral policy as unfair ahead of the polls, but analysts have stated either party stands to have a landslide victory. Three other candidates also are in the race for president, with voting for new members of parliament also underway. Results of the presidential elections are expected to be released in five days. In the event no candidate takes a clear 50% majority, a second runoff is to be scheduled, with September speculated. The United Nations has warned the M23 rebels destabilizing the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo to disarm. Executive orders from the Security Council recently renewed the mandate of the UN peacekeeping force in the DRC, MONUSCO, empowering it with a special force intervention brigade. The new brigade has authority to engage in offensive attacks in the Goma district, which would target the March 23 movement, M23 rebels, as opposed to just protecting civilians. Security heads of MONUSCO have given the M23 rebels near Goma an ultimatum to disarm by 4 p.m. local time on Thursday, August 4th, or face the use of force. The M23 rebels originally seized Goma on November 20th in 2012 after UN peacekeepers left the city of nearly one million people. Accepting a peace accord with the government of the DRC, the M23 rebels withdrew on December 1st, but earlier this year around April resumed clashes with the military. The push by the UN comes to put an end to the displacement of nearly 500,000 people who have fled the area and the hundreds who have lost their lives. In a statement issued on Tuesday, Rwandan state officials have denied they are supporting M23 rebels in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. The United Nations published a report in June explaining the M23 had been recruiting Rwandan mercenaries with the support of some sympathetic Rwandan military generals. The Rwandan Foreign Minister, Luis Mushikiwabo, speaking at a meeting of American Great Lakes nations, refuted the claims of the report saying, quote, scapegoating is not going to help DRC, unquote. Rwanda's President Robert Kagame has continually argued that the M23 are defectors from the Congolese military who have deserted with DRC arsenal and are receiving no support from the Rwandan government. The recent denial by the foreign minister follows a statement on Tuesday by the UN peacekeeping force MONUSCO in the DRC, which has received a renewed mandate with authority to take offensive action to protect civilians. Following the talks by representatives of the Great Lakes nations, a draft deal has been given to Kinshasa and the rebels. A meeting to review the proposal is expected to be held soon in Uganda. Counting of the ballot tickets from Mali's presidential elections have pointed a possible victory for the former Prime Minister, Ibrahim Boubacar Keita. Statistics supporting Keita is currently leading the polls are based on one-third of the votes from various districts having been counted. Somaila Sisse, the former finance minister, according to the Malian Minister of Territorial Administration, Colonel Musa Sinko Kulebali, is said to be in second place, but the position of Keita is suggesting a second round of voting will not be necessary. Somaila Sisse and the other 25 contestants for the presidency have voiced their discontent with the process of the tallying of the votes and have demanded a second poll must be conducted. Admits these complaints, rivals of Keita have called on Minister Koulibaly to resign, demanding an international commission should count the ballots. International observers, including the EU's top observer mission, have countered the claims of voting irregularity, saying the elections were carried out peacefully. It is being feared tension will rise, 
leading to possible violence as the announcement of official results approaches. The UN Security Council has called on rebel groups in Sudan's western region to end violence and hold peace talks with the national government under the basis of the Doha Document for Peace in Darfur, DDPD. On Tuesday, the 15-member body renewed the mandate of the Joint African Union Nations Mission in Darfur, UNAMID, for an additional 13 months to August 31, 2014. It also demanded that the UN prepare a review of UNAMID's mandate before February 28, 2014, in light of major changes and developments in the situation in Darfur since its establishment in January 2008. The UNC has seemingly preferred to back the decision of the AU earlier this month, which called on the international community to support the DDPD and to disregard calls by rebel groups for a comprehensive process leading to regime change. In a communique issued on July 19th, the UNSC said that a holistic approach to bringing democratic transition in Sudan can be achieved only once the ongoing conflicts in Darfur and the two areas are settled in an inclusive manner with the support of an AU panel chaired by former South African President Thabo Mbeki.